Hello everybody, Toasty Toad here, and welcome back to I Love My Phone. Um, we're back. Week 11. Let's get it. So what are we gonna upgrade? I think... The Abyss. Arts and Culture. That's good. Let's talk to theater. Here for a movie? Oh, this is like... That's basically me doing nothing, right? Philosophy follow. So you're not afraid of summoning an elder towards to this world. Enjoy a beer too. And are apparently a professor. What do you do? I teach. Duh. Fair, okay, I teach philosophy. Let me guess. I'm the topic of your PhD? Good guess, but no. I already have a PhD. Anyway, yeah. I go to a place, bore kids to death with my impeccable speaking skills, and then leave. Once in a while, I have to produce a boring derivative article on some old as fuck text that everyone and their each obsessed mother. Look, if this is the name of some philosopher, I'm sorry I'm butchering it. I'm stupid. I'm stupid. I cannot do this. Niche, niche, and already overanalyzed. Truly, a life one can only dream of. I'm not really sure whether that's a good thing or not. You know, it's funny. Well, what exactly? You're supposed to be an elder chore, a mind unreachable and fundamentally inhumane. Kind of like that, yeah. But yet, the first thing you wanted to know about me was my occupation. As if we truly are defined by our labor. You know, that I'm neither omnipotent nor omnim- omnimish- Omnibus, um, nimbus, it, it, uh, I'm not your capital G God that judges your objective worth only on your subjective worth matters to me. Yeah, but I have another theory. I won't share right now though. I need to sleep on it. Also, I didn't ask for your occupation to judge your character. I've been uh, living with you for a while now. I asked because your student kid made me think. I apologize again for whatever he said. He's an edgy one. I've heard from his usual professors that he walked into the databases and relative algebra class and screamed something about blockchain being the only true feature and was escorted out. The stupidest part is that blockchain has nothing to do with database structures. That is true. No, it's not about that. He said that I'm not a real god because I don't have a temple, so I've decided that we need to erect a temple in my name, of course, even to be promoted to head priest. And now are we going to pay for your temple, my lord? I'll think about the specifics later. Nice. That looks good. The fabric of a reality also tries really hard to accommodate your powers and what you conceptually mean. Let's post on social media. Hi chat, I'm not an idol, I'm God. Okay. They respond with praying emoji. Nice of them. Thank you for your donations to the Church of Acolyte. Please attend our weekly digital service led by yours truly. I'm blessing all of your Doritos and Kermit merch remotely. Doritos. <laughs> Spam emails. Dear sir, I have been requested by the Nigerian National Petroleum Company to contact you for your assistance in resolving my... Why are you reading spam emails? Why are you reading my spam emails? was just passing by, I saw the Nigerian prince poppy pasta. But really, why? They're hilarious. Gotcha. Do you want to pick up a hobby or two? Anyway, you might be wise, experienced, and live a joyless existence, but this is my first time seeing the Nigerian prince thing. Don't ruin it for me. Okay, okay. No ruining scammy meals for my deity. Got it. Temple research. <clears throat> you sit down and think about your future temple. What do you want from it? What have other gods, goddesses, and horrors unimaginable done for their places of power? Maybe you need to ask around. Ah, the skies and the runes, the closest thing to this realm. The place where most gods spend their time. Uh, what a hag. Hey, old bucko. Ahoy, bucko. Are you talking to me? You betcha. In the same boat with you here and not well respected here. I've been told me too young 
young and fake for the proper kind. Anyways, I'm trying to get kind of accepted here for what? 20 something human years, but to no avail. First time seeing another non member, though. You open to collaborate? Maybe. More importantly, who are you? Me? Oh, it's a flying spaghetti monster. No. Monster, you say? Are you from the other realm? In a sense, yeah. Me, the monster of maths, the most abstract. Did you know the number of pirates is inversely proportional to the global temperature? And why do you care? Don't know. Just a fun fact. Anyway, you said you're too young and fake. Well, I'm definitely real and have outlived many a human. So what keeps you outside the gates, then? You said for Bay of the Crimson Skies. Maybe because I am a real monster. That's why. The Pantheon and its members will be there tomorrow, after all. It might be a good idea to pay more, more attention. In-laws struck... In-law struggles follow up. He's back! Behold my greatness, mortal. Behold my greatness, mortal. Oh! It's you again. Ready to convert to... Convert to embrace my church and its teachings? Hi. That's not an answer. Anyway, did the knowledge I bestowed upon you help? Kind of. Did your friend help? Have you know I got promoted to head priest of this whole church. Is it being a friend more important? Depends. Determining oneself through his own labor is capitalistic. Not to mention ableist. <laughs> but determining oneself through others is even more so pathetic even in this economy. God damn, Theodore. Philosophers spit fucking facts. Anyway, what can I offer that my god cannot? Yes, about this. I have to apologize. Pardon? You were right. It was about us being gay. Bonding using divine knowledge definitely helped, but even though now they don't hate me, they disapprove of our relationship. And you still care because I love her. Cute. Well, I can make them forget about their scorn towards same-sex attraction if you can manage to bring them here. No, I don't think you will. With all due respect, my lord. And I was just about to get offended. Okay. Why do you think that? Their religious beliefs say that being gay is a grave sin, and I have heard that contradicting divine influences can end in disaster. They're not the nicest people, but I don't want them to suffer from that, you know. Alright, you have a point. So, what will you ask from your god? In fact, any divine authority can be safely overridden by a stronger deity's authority, but you're not even officially recognized by the Pantheon. Pantheon, you probably don't stand a chance. Right. Divine convictions can't be overridden using force, but can be challenged by people holding them. So I thought, then maybe. And I deeply apologize for my sheer audacity beforehand. Oh damn, it's so improper. Stop mumbling and get to the point. You came here with a specific proposal in mind, so spit it out. With all due respect, my lord, could you pretend to be gay? Excuse me, what? Well, you didn't dismiss me when I first came, so I thought that maybe... I wasn't bothered, and I'm still not. To be honest, I don't think language separates your kind from each other more than gender. Oh, I do think, okay. Can I ask what you mean? Well, our guest here speaks English, and so does her girlfriend's father. If I showed both of them a picture of a toy soldier, they'd instantly recognize it by name. In that sense, their minds are more closely linked that than that of her and the girl living above us. She's Chinese, by the way, and first-generation immigrant. For her, that toy has no significance whatsoever. Gotcha. You understood that? Yeah, pretty much. Could you please explain that for the lay person in the audience? It's your stupid G.I. Joes. Even if you were never a fan, you probably grew up surrounded by them, so whenever you see one, you remember your childhood. Like, a boy next door would obsess over them and offer to mow the lawn over the summer just to get their hands on one. Kids in your pre-K class would all argue over having the coolest one. Right. Well, in your mind, well, your mind is full of little G.I. Joes. They're just toys. I grew up in a place where we had neither pre-K nor a weird obsession with mowing the lawn. Most of us used public transport, and high school kids weren't allowed to drive. Honestly, when I learned that people here paid for cooking classes, I thought that meant something advanced. The likes of culinary school, not that a fully grown adult still struggle to make simple french fries. Why are you so mad at food? Because these lying french fries aren't considered to be an easy recipe for home cooking. Are you reading my mind? No. How'd you know that then? When you summoned me, you mentioned you were French and that you were sorry for being 
naturally, it was one of the first terms, first search terms I entered, and I was confused for a good few minutes. I asked myself, why would my first follower claim to be sliced and deep fried until golden root vegetable? Ah, do you want to maybe try some french fries? Why are you offering me a taste of your soul? I am not a potato. I'm teasing. Cute. What was that? Oh, right, your request, which is... You're pretending to be gay. You pretending to be gay. And this should help. How? They'll see that real gods support same-sex relationships. Why can't you just mention Apollo, hmm? His tragic bisexual endeavors are well known enough. How often does Apollo bless us mere mortals with his presence? We already tried this approach and it didn't do any good. No, some, Knowing something and seeing something with your own two eyes are very different things. And how will they know? Will they, you know, see and stuff? Well, can you publicly go on a date with another man? Please? Let me guess, you would also want me to appear human, yes? I'll be honest. It's kind of hard to determine your gender unless you're basically two cats. Wait, to determine because you're two cats in a suit. Okay, if I do this, you and your girlfriend will recognize me as your one and only deity of worship. You will send me your offerings. You will promote me amongst your people. Sure. Mmm, and who shall my god date? You, of course! Pardon. You are friends. I am his priest. Yes, you told me you find your new priesthood to be of more importance than friendship, but neither of you denied your friendship, and you live together, and you bickered like an old married couple. You are smarter than you look. I am in the middle of a war, after all. Okay. Okay, your lordship, do you mind? Do you think publicly dating a mortal will make me look more approachable and humane in the eyes of the general public? Maybe. Then I don't mind. Please dress nicely for our date. <laughs> Are you going to dress nicely? Of course. I'm going to wear human skin after. <laughs> human skin? Hopefully, like, fresh human skin? About dressing nicely although I must guess it's not literally someone else's skin right I do not skin anyone and wear the skin as a pillowcase the wind caresses your weirdly naked and oddly singular face you feel quite serious and soft no I mean you didn't borrow someone else's facial appearance not really no this fish is as much mine as my last two I've gathered enough knowledge of the human soul to make mine in my own image it too reflects who I am all right. It's a wacky fan fiction trope. Acknowledging it doesn't change the fact, though. You seem pretty upset about dating me. You know, I could get offended. No, it's not that. Do you know what fan fiction is? Fun fraction? What's that? Stories based on pre existing stories. Take someone else's playground and use it to your own heart's content. Ah. So every human secretly wants to be like me. Why? You too want to take someone else's realm and fuck with it? Mm -hmm. I only had the most academic of interest at heart. You know, the default position in today's society is that fanfiction is trashy and immature and kind of lame for both the creators and the readers to- Oh, that's not true. It is a good pastime. Thank you. But that's just stupid. Okay. Well, okay. I'm vibing with Theodore. Okay. These people don't care about art theory. They just want to hate on something. If you really apply the theory without the I hate teenage girls bias, 
The existence of fan fiction is amazing. I need to become a philosophy major because Theodore is spitting fucking facts in my face. You see the facts? Boom. You just hate teenage girls. Like, come on. At its core, fan fiction is a very postmodern thing. With the intentional derivativeness, spontaneous pluralism, and unapologetic rejection of the idea of a grand and universal meaning. Isn't that cool? I thought you didn't enjoy being in a fanfiction trope as of right now. It feels pretty surreal, so I felt obligated to invoke meta-awareness. Then I realized that metafiction is still fiction. If you truly are a character in a story, there is no way for you to challenge this fact. Sorry, I'm blabbering. Do you want to hold hands? By the way, you're supposed to blush over it. Sorry. Sorry. Keep getting notifications for things. Okay. Can I refuse? I suppose, but we're on a day and under surveillance. Fair enough. You offer Theodore your hand? Human fingers are surprisingly flexible and intertwine naturally. Monkeys with their stupid monkey bodies and lizard brains. Okay, so next step. We need to take a leisurely walk and enjoy our time together. Publicly. The more affectionate we are, the better. I think you're using this to your advantage. You promptly walked for a few blocks. How does one feel affection? You can read our minds, can't you tell? I can tell that it's there. I don't really understand where it begins, though. One moment there's nothing, and then it suddenly exists. I've read stories, too, but even the most praised authors don't provide an answer. With other emotions, it's more... I think you can pinpoint most of them to a singular cathartic event. If someone wrongs you, you feel hatred. If someone does something nice, you feel gratitude. And of course, human connection to the void is born out of loss. Normally, you humans don't recognize you treasure something until you've lost it because your minds are not equipped to deal with nothingness. So it makes you sometimes aware of love. Theodore suddenly stops and looks at you. Friends of mine once asked me the same thing, and I had answered that love is when you notice the small and insignificant things about another person, and the most trivial things feel special. But that's not your point of reference. I guess you can interpret love as treasuring someone and something so much that you fear losing them before it actually happens. A lot of people say love is both pleasure and pain. Thus, it is mourning something not yet lost, suffering from the very fact of its finiteness. How can you tell this about myself? How can you tell this about myself? Observation mostly? I do live with you. The hand in yours feels warm and soft. We've been circling around this district for hours. Take me somewhere else. You have a specific location in mind. As a matter of fact, I do. Could you show me your favorite places around town? This is such a fucking vibe. Ah! And they were roommates. You were there before, of course. You can stay here again. Mm. Let's try. Shouldn't you be my subordinate, a barely cloth? goddess ask you, the goddess of love, surrounded by flowers and petals, and are those swords? You inquire about the swords, she tells you not to dig into her shameful past. Nothing much to do, you decided to meditate and connect to the abyss, see what others of your kin have to say. The abyss sends you a message. The message is, lol kitty. You swear to yourself that not a single living soul can learn. Website. I've decided that, uh-huh, I need a website for my church. What, no show of enthusiasm? It's a lovely idea, but in this economy, do you know much a software engineer costs? I miss my scholarship days. I was paid a shitload just to attend classes, and I live like a game. Now I live 
like a moderately wealthy janitor. Fine, fine. You need to figure out how to make imaginary numbers one day. Kitty, become human. Curious about the aftermath, you check the news. It's only proper for a beginner god to model it. Modern monitor is publicity, or so you think. Ten deities you didn't know were queer. How dare these mortals put you at number nine? You hiss in displeasure. What's irritated you, Lord, your lordship, today? I'm pretty sure I heard someone trying to learn heavy metal vocal techniques, so I wanted to check in. You show him the article. Don't worry, a lot of queer teenagers have already decided that they want to scan you and be kitty kinnies. Here, they actually made a quiz based on this piece. Which queer gods, god or goddess are you? Exactly. Whoops, did you get? Shame to tell you, but follow. Apparently, thinking about the Roman Empire often makes one qualify. Isn't he originally Greek? Yes, but the Romans didn't have their own alternative, so they imported him Apollo as. Damn, his love life was a disaster, though. Click on the test. They ask you pointless questions out of which song of the repertoire of musicians you've heard of is your favorite. I am literally me. You hiss again, stupid Tez. Yes, this sound. Pretty unsettling, not gonna lie. I've never known that human vocal vocal cords can produce such a thing. By the way, why aren't you reverting back to your usual attire? I don't know. This one is also me, but it feels pretty comfortable. Touching fabric is way less unpleasant. For once, so I might as well stick with it. It feels right, probably for some bullshit divine order reason. I'm a cat person! Let's see, what do we need to upgrade, folks? After this, we're, we're gonna ascend our godhood, become greater. Yeah, this seems right. Everything has value except for things that don't. Correct? Let's save. Oh wait, was that, was that another week? Uh, let's talk to you. Care for a movie? Sure. Some might call it slacking off, but you're maintaining duties. The Frog Prince. The door rings, it's been an uneventful month, so you hope it's a new follower. A, a, a woman with a frog. Look at how cute the little frog is. Hello, I'm here to pray. Wow, jackpot! Go on, I am listening. Oh, I thought you were rather monster-like. Don't assume things about thy deities. She looks kind of scared, so you immediately back down. And here I thought it would make me look more approachable. So how can this singular, humble, eldritch god help you today? You observe the frog in her hands. My head priest is French. He might enjoy the meat, but I would ask to refrain from such offerings next time. Oh, no, no, that's not an offering. It's my ex. Here. That's the offering. Our actual offering appears to be a piece of fabric. Upon closer examination, you identify it as a preschooler-sized white dress. It tastes bitter and low-key spoiled. She wanted to be a fairy once, because of course, back then, bleh. Is it bad? I'm sorry, I've heard you like sentimental pieces. I do. Yours is just sold with bad associations. What happened? Did a fairy steal your firstborn? Kind of. So, is this an insufficient offering? You sigh. I would really prefer something else, for example, that acrylic charm attached to your phone case. Actually, give me the case as well. But it's limited edition. You came here to ask for a divine miracle, and yet you can't spare a trinket? I'm generous, but I'm not cheap, you know? Right, right. Reluctantly, she gives you what you asked for. I just wanted your phone charm, bitch. Ah, yes. The memories of her first convention and bubbly and fizzy, most notably joyous. The shine, they shine bright like twin charms purchased with sole intent of being exchanged. A ritual of sorts. She and her best friend are dressed in impractical costumes of fictional space, blood sacrificing emperor worshiping troops. So, what's your request? I'm sorry for trying to trick you. I, s I do have a grudge against fairies now. It was cheap of me to give you the dress as an offering. I know, and I've always wanted to be blessed by a fairy when I was a little girl. I refused to join any church and declared my allegiance to the fairies. 
no one showed up, right? That was until I met my boyfriend. Well, ex-boyfriend, I guess. And here I was under the impression that your kindness and improve of relationships with non-sentient species. No, that's not a frog, you see. We started dating like in high school. It was my first relationship and every girl I knew told me men are trouble that I should keep an eye on my future beau. Not allow him to go fishing without supervision and that his sport friends are going to suck. Stuff like that. Not sure I'm following with them. Well, I thought it was normal, you know, not to feel much about the boy. So when Dave confessed to me, I agreed. Like, I didn't feel any butterflies, but he was nice enough. My parents liked him fine, and he never made mean jokes about me or my friends. We moved together to a new city, to another city, and started and finished college, planned to marry and stuff. He never complained when I asked him not to go to any parties without me. I thought we were doing fine without any magical intervention or help. We were doing fine. Until a month ago, I found out he was liking other girls' photos online, chatting with them, watching movies together online. Is that an issue? I don't know anymore. But I got pretty pissed. Like, everyone told me it was unacceptable, so I shouted at him and everything. Even broke some tableware. And then, for the first fucking time, a fairy godmother made her entrance. Told me I was doing perfectly fine in life, so she never felt like she needed to interfere. Said if my Prince Charming was behaving unprincely towards me, it was her job... It was a job for her. Cursed him into a frog. And what's the condition? Every curse has a lifting condition. The true love's first kiss, of course. Makes sense, right? So it didn't work. As you can see, no it didn't. Semantics probably... Probably, but should the love be mutual? I don't know. I don't know whether he loved me or if I was just convenient. And why do you care? He's not your prince. The charm didn't work. Well... Some other prince will lift princess will lift your curse in your stead. I don't know. Maybe he deserved it. But will he be okay? Even if he cheated on me, I still don't want him to be eaten by your French friend or something. He likes his priest status more than his friend status. But speaking about your froggy problem, it's some other god's will. Then fairies are like clerks for them. So it would be rude of me to interfere and step on another deity's toes. What I can do for you is help you get over the dude. You can? Sure. You feel wrong and fully deserve to embrace that. You smile at her and whisper to her consciousness. There's no need for you to feel guilty. Better? Oh. Yeah, kind of like I feel justified. You'll find someone else more deserving, okay? You stand in the doorway and watch her throw the unfortunate frog away with a smile. Ah, uh, that's your girl. Did we just chunk a human frog somewhere? He still has human consciousness in that frog? That'd be kind of fucked up. Just saying. Alright, so we're gonna end this episode here, um, week 16. So, this has been awesome so far, and I'm totally hoping that this ends up having a couple. You know what I'm saying? And they were roommates. So, if you guys like this series and you want to see more games like this, you can like, comment, subscribe, hit that notification button, or suggest some other things for me to play in the comment section below. I just want to say thank you guys so much for watching. Take care, take it easy, until the next time.